All right. Today we're going to be talking about uh, conscience. And this really goes hand in hand with with the lesson before, being responsible, and the lesson afterward, um, the lifestyle of a Christian. Um, it really has to do with um, how to keep right relationships with people, um, and how to fix wrong relationships with people, um, and how to how to have a good have a good, how to have a good conscience. So, or a clear conscience, I should say. Um, obviously, in any discussion of, of of the conscience, we we all we always must start with um, the with gossip. Gossip really can be a problem in, in churches, and the problem is, is is that a lot of Christians reach a plateau in their, in their life where they don't really want to grow anymore, and they don't really want to change, um, but they want things done a certain way. Um, and this is always a dangerous area to be getting into. And always be careful when you can't, when somebody outside of your circle of trust tries to tell you something and you won't listen because of this or that maybe you don't like them or whatever um, for instance maybe somebody tells you you know you you kind of have a problem with gossiping and you say oh no because those people who are closest to me don't don't say that well maybe you surrounded yourself with like-minded people that will allow you to do these stupid things because they do them too that is a very real possibility, and you always have to have to keep a close watch on those people who you're um, allying yourself with. Um, and, uh, gossiping really is a bad thing, and usually, um, in my experience, people will either be oblivious that they do it, or have justified themselves for so long that they just can't see reason. I've run into very few people who uh, gossip, and when you tell them, they say, you know what, you're right, I'm sorry. Most of the time, that doesn't happen. Um, <clears throat> the exception to that is um, people who maybe just start gossiping, or uh, genuine people who just start getting off track. Um, but, you know. Usually, the genuine people are those people who are just seeking after God on a day-to-day -day basis, and um, you know the Holy Spirit has a way of, of of revealing these things. But when we when we continue to live our lives in sin, um, we become blinded to these things that God's trying to show us, and then we then we wonder, hey, why isn't God speaking to me anymore? Well, maybe it's because you're not obeying Him. So. A uh, gossip is a secret revealer or a scandal monger. Okay, a secret revealer, someone who who says things um, publicly when they shouldn't. Uh, maybe something that's none of their business. Maybe something that's um, somebody else's business. Um, and it always go it goes something like this. Um, so and so did did this. And if you look at the last point there, it says many say that they were just saying. I'm just saying, you know, hey, this person's doing this. I'm just saying, or um, they're asking for prayer. Can you pray for me because um, my neighbor did this and this and this and see what I mean? It, 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 gossiping, uh, or I just wanted to let you know, pastor, that this or this or this. And, and obviously, people don't only gossip to the pastor; they um, gossip usually to everyone. But I will tell you this: if if they're gossiping about someone else to you, they're gossiping about you to someone else, first off. And, I, and also, if you establish yourself as someone who will not listen to gossip, they won't do it around you anymore. It's that simple. People who sin don't like to feel guilty for sinning, especially when they know not to sin. Um, gossipers are not always self-aware. I kind of mentioned this. Um, sometimes the person who's gossiping will be completely caught off guard that, that, that you're accusing them of gossiping. I, I don't gossip. I'm a good Christian person. Be really, really careful for stagnating. Um, stagnating. Uh, like I say, it's, not, it's the people who have been in church for forever that I have the most um, 
problems in discipleship with. Um, they're usually the ones who have the hardest time witnessing, the ones that oppose the Holy Spirit, the ones who um, don't want to go in a new direction, the ones who don't want to expand the ministry but only expand the club experience. They're the ones who oppose the pastor the most. It's it's the drug addicts that get saved and, 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 and those people who have no etiquette, no church etiquette. It's those people that I have the least amount of conflicts with that I have to resolve. Anyways, um, so someone who shares another's uh, failings, um, for instance, uh, my child did this. Now remember, gossiping about your child really isn't going to make other people be on your side. It's going to make things um, more awkward and more straining and stressful for your child because they will know that you're gossiping about them. It's not like they're stupid or something. Um, and shameful life details. Did you hear what this person did? Regardless of whether it's a secret or not, it's it's not something that you really need to be talking about. See, for too long, um, we've kind of just talked about whatever comes to mind rather than thinking about is this a good thing to talk about. And Paul, and Paul writes about this. Be thinking about those things which are good. <laughs> and Philippians often for the uh, for the purpose of building themselves up and making others look bad. Not always, but very often, either making themselves look good or someone else look bad. Maybe they don't like the person. Maybe they're just really insecure. Um, there's a lot of people who, because they are insecure, will do things um, such as you know justify themselves all the time. Um, every time that somebody, opposes, if somebody says anything, they always have, feel the need to justify themselves. That might be the sign of a guilty conscience. Um, you know, they they're always uh, attacking other people to make themselves feel better. These are things that insecurity does to us. So, and gossip really does go hand in hand with insecurity. Uh, gossipers try to get you on their side. Whenever they're telling a story, it's always got to be you know us against them. And if you are in ministry, be extremely careful about this because this is what's going to happen. Somebody is going to oppose you or say something dumb or, or something where you get offended or hurt or in some way as a minister. And then other people will say stuff to you to try and get you on their side. See what I mean? And so you'll be kind of, oh, I didn't like them anyways. See what I mean? Be real careful about this. Um, well, let me read, some, read a few passages. Proverbs 11. 12 through 13 says, Through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is destroyed. Whoever derides their neighbor has no sense, but the one who has understanding holds their tongue. Um, oftentimes, the people who gossip are those people who just honestly can't distinguish between closing their mouth and opening their mouth. Power of 16, 28. And you know, it's okay to not say anything at all. If you don't have anything good to say, just keep your mouth shut. It's okay. If somebody says something dumb and you don't say anything in response, it's okay. It's not gonna it's not gonna kill you or anything. Proverbs 16:28 says, "A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends." I will say this: if you are the um, the matriarch and patriarch, if you will, of your family, and you are stirring up conflict, you, you need to stop. You're you're setting a tone for your family that's causing discord and disunity. It's causing that. Um, an example of this is pitting your children against each other. Well, oh, did you hear what this child did? Hey, did you hear what this child did? And, you're, and, and they are, you're always trying to get them to go against each other, maybe for the sake of being closer to them. This is manipulation at its worst. <clears throat> or, um, excuse me, when somebody messes up and you have to tell everyone, you have to tell your whole family. My sister did this, and, and did you know that my sister did this? You're always trying to get people on their side. On your side, you're always trying to stir up the conflict. You're always uh, maybe maybe you don't even mean to uh, stir up the conflict, but everywhere that you go, there's conflict. Regardless of whether you're intending to or not, if everywhere you go, there's a conflict, it's because of you. I'm surprised by how many people go from church to church to church to church. This church is oh, never mind. The pastor's the pastor's just he's 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 this or he's that, and then they go to another church. 
well, that other church was just so-and-so, but hey, this pastor's crap. Oh, never mind. You know, and they go from church to church, and they always have to have to gossip and talk bad about these other churches, and they're doing no growth whatsoever because they just want to maintain, and they want to be thought of as the greatest thing in the world, and they want to, or they want to reign, uh, rule things. And so then the church sees these people, and they assume that this is true of all Christians because some Christians who are very noticeable, let's just say, choose to ignore the words of Paul and boast in their stupidity. Um, I will say that um, I have found a lot more... Please understand what I'm saying, and I say this very cautiously, but I've found that more women have a problem with gossip than men in the church. Men have their own stupid conflicts, and they have their things that, that they do that, that, that women don't do. For instance, if you've ever seen a rooster, like, you know, a chicken, a rooster, a male, male chicken, um, they, when they're in, like, a, a, a pen with other chickens, they do this thing where they, they keep their back leg like this, and they have to show their dominance, and they get up in the in the chick in the chicken's face. Men do that thing. They, you know, they always have to establish themselves as, as as the as the king of the hill. You know, and and, and <laughs> so I'm not saying that men don't do stupid things. I'm just saying in this stupid thing, this is something that I've found more women um, do. And I've noticed a few things that encourage it. First off, when a husband doesn't take control of the family and doesn't direct and guide the family and the wife has to, I've noticed that she has a, well, she will have a harder time with gossip than if he would have stepped up and done his job. Excuse me. Um, another thing I've noticed is when, um, when a woman can't get under authority when a woman can't get under authority, I've noticed that gossiping becomes a bigger issue as well. But this go hand, goes hand in hand with what I just said. Um, so I would encourage you, um, if you are a woman, um, be on guard with your mouth. Um, I think that the reason why uh, Paul wrote so much about women, you know, not talking, was in some part to um, some of the disunity that sometimes a woman can inadvertently cause. Um, now, I don't want to make it sound like I am a sexist, and that's exactly how it's coming off. So let me clarify a few things. First off, women can be teachers. Women can give messages in the church. Women are equal with men. Uh, women can pray in church. Women don't have to have head coverings. Uh, women um, don't have to be quiet in the church in, in, in the context that you're thinking. Um, women don't have to... Um, be quiet in the presence of a man. Women don't have to serve men. Women don't have to... I mean, I could keep going. Um, women and men are equal. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that the husband is definitely the head of the household. And the, the Bible has a lot to say about the, the manner of a woman's um, bringing peace to a situation, making things um, better. For instance, I think it's the book of Peter where he says that a, a wife's quietness will will win over her husband more than you know having all the all the right words and all the right answers. Um, and another thing to think about is um, where Paul's talking about the order of the church and mentioning about how these women are, are causing a distraction with their with their talking. Um, you know, these are just some things to show about how uh, Paul in, in in First Timothy says about how not they shouldn't um, you know try and. And, and dress up to to prove their points, but to uh, to do good works and and and, and to let that be um, the light of their character. But obviously, this isn't a discussion on women. I just want to try and not offend anybody here. I'm not saying anything against women. I'm just saying that the area of gossiping tends to be a, a more um, a problem that that more women face than men, and that um, I've noticed a bigger problem when a woman, when a wife, not a woman in general, but when a wife is not submitted to her husband's authority. So, 
Um, just some things to think about there. Um, Proverbs 16.28, I already mentioned that one. Okay. Stirring up the conflict. And gossip separates close friends. Um, okay, so then 2019 says, um, A gossip betrays confidence. A gossip betrays confidence. So avoid anyone who talks too much. In another place of Proverbs, it says, Where there's many words... Um, I can't remember how he says it, but basically, um, where there's many words, something stupid's going to happen. <laughs> I can't remember exactly how he words it, and I really wish I could remember where it's at, but anyways. Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God, the people who make peace. Okay, where Hebrews puts it like this. Um, oh, how does he say it? It's in uh, chapter 13. Um, he says, pursue peace with all men, not avoid conflict. He says, pursue peace. Um, and he says, um, you know, if, if we're pursuing peace, then that would mean we don't ignore the people that we don't like. And that would also mean that we don't... Um, Join against those people that we don't like. We are pursuing peace. We're making an effort to make peace. 1, 28 through 32 says, Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so they do what, they, what ought not to be done. Um, they have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy. Notice how the, these things that he compares with each other. Envy, murder, Strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, sanderers, god-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no un understanding, no, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. So, um, you know, once again, obviously people like to read this passage and only focus on homosexuality. But if you looked there, disobeying their parents, having they have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy, says very specifically about how they are gossips, and these gossips are equated with these other things too. So, um, don't listen or join in the conversation. When people are gossiping around you, first off, don't listen. And there's a little bit of us that always wants to, yes. Um, and then there's another part of us that wants to join in the conversation. Oh, I need to stick up for the person who's who's. Um, this is this is sometimes what we do. Somebody will um, will be telling you their woes, and you're just lending an ear. You're you're being a good Christian by lending an ear. That's definitely not what the Bible says at all. That's gossiping. Okay, don't listen and don't join in the conversation. Let them know it's wrong. This is wrong, and I'm not going to listen. Either walk away, or if you can, you know, or, or or tell them to stop talking about it, or something. But don't just sit there and do nothing, or sit there and join. Even worse, don't invest in someone else's offense. Um, this is actually a recurring, um, a, rec a recurring event, um, in church conflict. This is how it happens. Something happens to this guy. This guy tells this guy. I'll go this way so you can see my hands. This guy. Then this guy goes and tells this guy, who either tells the board or tells the pastor. And then the pastor or the board has to, depending on how the church is run, whatever, um, it goes to that person and reprimands them when they don't even know about the situation. They've heard a one-sided account of the situation. Don't invest in someone else's offense. Don't do this. And you as a leader, make sure that the people go and resolve the conflict with themselves. The original two people need to be the only two people involved. And I will say this. Our pastor just said this last Sunday. It's very difficult to argue with more than one, with uh, less than two people. In other words, if someone else is trying to argue, just keep your mouth shut and there's probably going to be no, no argument. Okay, but don't don't do this in a high and mighty way. This is how we do this. We'll keep our mouth shut, but just as long as people understand that we're still in control of the situation. We get that look on our face. The ways that we communicate. This was also just said last Sunday. The expression on our face, the tone of our voice. 
and the words that we say. See, sometimes we think, oh, well, I didn't say anything bad. No, but your face did. Or you, the tone of your voice definitely did. Um, so first off, realize it's none of your business. Some other people are going to have conflicts. That's how it is, and it's none of your business. Second off, especially when you're only heard one side. If you're going to take up fights for someone else, which I would say do not under any circumstance do this. This is stupid, and you will be stupid for doing it. Because think about this. Two dogs are quarreling. So you stick your hand in there. Your hand's going to get bit. It's just stupid. This is just stupid behavior. Not only that, but it's, it's stupid for those people who are on the outside looking in. We need to do things as a church that testifies to the world, not prevents the world. I'll give you another example of, of testifying to the world. When there's no order in a church and people come in, it is very shameful. Very shameful. And usually the people won't come back. Why? Because it is shameful. People do not like coming into a church where there's just chaos everywhere. Um, but even if they are your best friend or close family, this is very difficult to do. Oh, it's my daughter. Oh, it's my mom. Oh, it's my this. Oh, it's my that. It's none of your business of what it is. And you as a Christian need to have that discernment. So also never encourage a bad attitude. Um, I was there... And this person was wrong and did so and so and so I let them know and do 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 do. All that you're doing is encouraging a bad attitude. And I'll tell you another way we encourage bad attitudes. When somebody is struggling with something, like let's say we know that they have a problem with their parents. And so we start bad mouthing either their parents or our parents or, or maybe some other authority figure. This is going to going to further hurt their their Christian walk. What you have to do as a Christian is be aware of somebody's conflict without necessarily judging them for that conflict. Does that make sense? Basically, being aware of what somebody struggles with so that you can, so that for the purpose that you don't tempt them further, not for the purpose of judging them. Never encourage that bad attitude. Even if you were there, you know, somebody else comes to you and, and they say something really stupid, and what do we do? We we, we, we try and we try and win them over with many words. You don't have to worry do, 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 do you're a good person you do, 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 do. there's this there's this one well-meaning person that I was doing ministry with one time and somebody came in and they were just they were just distraught about the situation that was going on and so she tried to console this person. But she had so many words that were coming out that only about a fourth of the words were actually good and godly. The other three-fourths were just stupid things. Was she a good person? Yes, of course. Was she a well-meaning person? Yes, of course. But the words that she said were not biblical. They were just simply things to make someone feel better, and they were not weighted against Scripture. Okay, they were not. She did not say, are these views that I've held on these things good things to believe? She didn't say that. Instead, she said, these are things that I've heard over the course of my life, and, and I think that this, I just need to spit, out, spit them out rapid fire. You know, and, and, and saying all these just stupid things. Finally, uh, finally there was nothing else I could say to, to, to guide the conversation, because I, I didn't want to um, reprimand her in front of the other, the other person. Uh, obviously, that would have caused more harm than good. So I just let her finish her really stupid spill. And then when she walked outside, I stopped the other person and said, look, because I could see that she was getting frustrated, and so that's another reason why I backed off. And I said, "Look, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, okay, that she, she didn't mean it like that, um, you know, because I could see that she was getting offended in her spirit. And normally, I would, I wouldn't have said something like that because that leads the way to gossip. But I know that this person wasn't someone who gossips, and I'm not someone who gossips." And so I took a leap of faith to try and restore the situation. Because what I could see was happening is she was becoming embittered towards this person who was just trying to help her. And so for this one time, I took a leap of faith in doing this. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have said this. Probably shouldn't have. Um, it's not good to, to assume that you know the right way of doing things. So, you know, I said, you know, she meant well. This is, and then I kind of guided the direction in a more godly and biblical way, and she was able to learn from it, and she was able to forgive that person who was just trying to help. See, I mean, where there are many words, you're going to say something dumb. 
Make sure that you're not saying many words, especially when people come to you in conflict or need needing counseling. You know, it's important to note that when they teach you how to counsel someone, they often teach you how to help that person resolve their own conflicts, not how to tell them all the right answers. When you're counseling someone, you're not supposed to have all the right answers. You're just supposed to listen and guide the conversation. But, anyways, never encourage that bad attitude. And be the voice of reason. Be the voice of reason. Um, when they're saying stuff and they're going on these rants, just... Okay, let's hold on. Is that really accurate? First off, you don't know that. You don't know that for a fact. You know, it, bring, bring reason to the conversation. Help them to see that they are thinking unreasonable because they're hurt. Make peace with there's chaos. This person's upset. There's, there's, see, and this is what I was trying to do in that situation. And I, and I was successful in it. But... I may have been able to do it in a different way. Um, now, obviously, nothing bad happened, but something could have something bad could have happened, and so I, I would I would strongly discourage that because what I did, what I did, is I admitted the other person's fault to the other person. I mean, the, this person's fault, person B's fault to person A. They meant well. See, and I definitely should not have done that. I should have just wound the conversation back into the issue at hand. And, see what I mean? And, and so I was actually helping gossip to have taken root. Thank God it didn't, and, and I was able to cause peace in the situation. But you can't bank on that. Um, so make peace where there's chaos. Go to a situation where, there, where there's discord and bring unity, especially if you are the matriarch or patriarch of your household. Um, you know, talk to your kids, even when they're all growing up. Yes, you still have a place, even when you're when you get older. One of the most sad things is when people get the assumption, <clears throat> excuse me, that they kind of lose purpose after they reach a certain age. Uh, gospers dwell on past offenses and cling to attitudes. They constantly dwell on past attitude offenses. One woman. Um, that really was a really bad gossip. Um, she had daddy issues from when she was a kid, and she was up in her 50s. I mean, that should tell you something. Um, just that bad attitude that had taken root as a child that she still hadn't dealt with as a 50-some-year-old person. One guy, he had problems with his mom, and he was in his he was 45 years old, and he still had problems with his mom. Oh, she screwed up my life. Just let it go. Even if you had the worst parents in the world, not likely, but let's just say that you did. Um, you still need to let it go. So these people, they'll, they'll, they'll dwell on those past offenses, and they'll cling to the attitude that comes with it. It gives them a sense of empowerment. And oftentimes, it'll change who they are. The woman who I was mentioning, for instance, thought that she was a very passive person. She was not. She was a very... Always in your face, always talkative. Whenever anything was said that she didn't agree with, she instantly laid the cards on the table, right there on the table. You know, and and, and, and once again, I'm not trying to gossip about them. I'm trying to show you an, a model of what we do. Because what we do is is we agree with some, what someone's teaching in principle. And, and we say, okay, yes, that's a good thing. But then when we actually see it in practice, we say, um, wait, what? See what I mean? Um, so ask, why am I saying this? What is my pur purpose in saying this? If you don't have a good purpose in saying this, chances are you shouldn't say it. With what attitude am I saying this? In other words, what is the underlying um, attitude? What are, the, what are you saying without words? Because what people will do is they'll say things, and they won't realize that they're saying it with a bad attitude. Oh no, I don't. I don't hate so and so. Well, you're talking bad about them. I, I am. Anyways, um, they will also make problems and issues where there are none. Sometimes with conflict, you just let it go and it works itself out. You don't have to hop on top of every single conflict. So um, I'm gonna stop there. Um, this this lesson is extremely long, and I don't want to make too long of videos. Um, so, okay, uh, we'll pick up next uh, video with um, rebuking and conflict resolution, and we may make it to having a clear conscience, I don't know. Um, okay.